This is breaking news. Members of Congress representing New York are touring the Roosevelt Hotel where asylum seekers are being housed. Let's go to it now. An issue. This is an issue of incredible humanitarian proportions. It's a crisis and we must come together at the table and negotiate a permanent solution to this crisis. We have been meeting with uh, Homeland Security Secret uh, Secretary Majorca, the entire delegation two weeks ago, to ask to help us expedite work permits and we asked to expand TPS. If we provide temporary protection status to these families who are here and want to work, we will then facilitate the transfer of these families that are here to other sites. And I want to thank the city of New York for the incredible work that they have been doing, feeding these people, these families, providing shelter. And I just want for everyone to understand, these families left their countries with their entire families many of them facing persecution, violence in their own country, climate change in Central America, and they are in their right to seek asylum. And it is our duty to provide for a process where they could come before a judge, and stay, an immigration judge, and state their case so that then we decide whether or not to grant asylum to these families. But for the Republicans to use this as a political ploy is disgraceful. And it is time for us to come together and resolve this issue. It's not gonna go away. Today is New York. Tomorrow it's gonna be Florida, it's gonna be Illinois, it's gonna be Pennsylvania, it's going to be in other part of the country. So we are asking the administration, the Biden administration, to provide more resources for the city of New York. Over 100,000 families have been here. This site is at capacity, 3,000. And in every of our congressional district and Thompson Mary district, we have over 30 centers, uh, shelters, uh, five, six sh uh, shelters in my Williamsburg and Bushwick uh, part of the district. And we are asking uh, the federal government to provide the resources so that New York could deal with this crisis. It is it, it's, it's becoming an economic burden, but also we need to put ourselves in the shoes of this family. If one day, we are confronted with the fact that we have to leave this country or other countries and go to another country seeking refuge and asylum. That is what is the law, is international law that allow for individuals to go to the border, enter a port and seek asylum. And our country has to provide a expedited process for these people to stay their faith. Let me ask uh, Councilwoman Julie uh, Wong to say a few words. And by the way, we spoke to the families here, and they are in good spirit in the sense that they really are grateful the way they have been treated, the fact that there are medical staff, that there are lawyers here, but we need more. There is a lack of manpower, human capital, to deal with in this site and other sites across the city. What was the condition? You took the call place. What you like Well, uh, I am impressed about the setup, and this is not my first time here. Uh, there is order. Uh, uh, there is different sections because confidentiality is an issue, and um, and the different setups and stages and offices and room to provide privacy for the families. But this is a, a, a shelter, basically. It's a, it, 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 it. So we have rooms with a lot of people sleeping. 
and a lot of families. So uh, it, 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 I just, I, it, it, it moves me. It's painful. It is painful for Ron DeSantis to bus people out of Florida and for the governor of Texas to bus people to New York. It's disgraceful, it's immoral, and, 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 and people, know to, people need to know that. We are losing our way. That is not the American way. I, I want Julie Wan to share what she saw, and, and then we could go and answer questions. Thank you so much, Congresswoman. My name is Julie Wan, J-U-L-I-E-W-O-N, and I'm the council member representing Long Island City, Sunnyside, Woodside, and Astoria, which overlaps with Congresswoman Nidia Velasquez, where we have more than 35 shelters for migrants and refugees in this district. That is the highest amount, we've had the highest amount of migrant families and children registered to a public school district in the entire city. I want to make it clear, today is a very clear sign of the Congresswoman taking charge along with her colleagues, Adriano Espaillat, as well as Grace Meng, and the entire New York delegation showing that it, this is not a city issue. This is a national issue that our federal partners to the city are working hand in hand to say this is a humanitarian crisis and this goes beyond New York City. This is a countrywide issue and what we have just seen again and again day after day we have thousands of families arriving at, not just at this site but at our city we have families that are arriving with their children women who have given birth in this site the day of arrival inside when you go in there it is a true reflection of what new york city stands for as a right to shelter city and as a sanctuary city when you enter there is a very streamlined process where you sit in the intake center, they make sure that you're registered, and then you start to go through a process where you first start with your health and mental health. There are screenings to make sure that you're immunized on the spot. There are doctors in there, EMTs, to make sure that your health is good, and then your mental health, and they continue the registration process to make sure that the moment you arrive, you're treated with dignity, with casework, all the way to placement for shelter. And we are going to continue to fight with our federal partners to make sure that there are work authorization papers. We have seen during COVID-19, the pandemic, a citywide economic crisis. What this is doing is not adding on to the crisis, but creating an opportunity of an economic boom, of adding a workforce that is hungry to work, that is willing to do anything they can to help our city. And that is why we're fighting for work authorizations to be expedited, as well as making sure that every single person has access to education, which is why our public schools have welcomed these students in. And we're going to continue to build a future generation of women like myself and the Congresswoman to say that we are children of immigrants, but here we are representing this country, which has always been built on diversity and inclusion of welcoming everyone who is hungry, who is needy, who is saying that this is their opportunity to call this place home. Thank you so much. To limit the, the, the amount of bed? Yeah, to, mm -hmm. more, to limit to 60 days. Oh, 60 days. Make more room. Uh, look, you know, I don't believe that when we deal with crisis, that we could set time limits, because that is then uh, setting yourself for failure and criticism. So. Uh, we got to deal with this issue the way it is. It is a, it's a humanitarian crisis that is going to put a lot of strain on the economics of New York. But again, it is a call to all levels of government, including the governor, the city, and the federal government. We, we must come to the table and look at ways where we can help the city of New York to deal with this crisis that we are facing today. You know, this is a country of law. And what a message are we sending to the world when every other country allow for those who are seeking refuge and, and asylum to go through a process and be dealt with. So, um, 
again, I am saying to the Biden administration, we know that the Republicans are not willing partners in coming up with solutions and the desire to resolve this crisis. And the administration has to use every authority on their, their power so that we could expedite the asylum process so that we could expand on TPS and, and expedite working permits. The people that are here, they, they, don't, they, don't, they didn't talk to me today about pain or suffering. All they are asking is, give me a job. Give me a job. And that is, we should use this crisis as an opportunity. You know, when at the, the ranking member of the Small Business Committee, and we hold hearings, and we have the construction industry coming before us, and the agricultural community, the first thing they say, we're not finding workers. We have workers here who are willing to start working on day one. Congresswoman, I, I want to know where you see the opportunity for compromise with Republican colleagues. And what does it do when you're up here calling them disgraceful? How are you going to cooperate with them when you're saying they're disgraceful? Basically doing what the mayor's doing, giving them a bus ticket and sending them out of the city. Well, you know, I think that they need telling me how you could categorize the actions taken by the governor of Florida or the governor of Texas who is putting blades and exposing people's life. That is not the American way. Ron DeSantis, that is not the American way. So where's the compromise then? Well, they need to know that there will be political consequences. The same way that they're dealing today with taking women's right to, to an abortion, how they're paying a price in the ballot box. Look at what happened in, 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 in Ohio. Where is the compromise you want? Well, the, the compromise is these people are here. They're going to stay here. We need to do to, uh, by them what we did when Nicaragua, when the Haiti faced an earthquake. We need to expand TPS and provide a legal way for them to integrate themselves into American society and work in and be productive citizens. That's all they want. What about the border? So, Do you have any compromise on the border? Something for Republicans? We, something? Well, the border, so this is the lowest number of people crossing the border. It means that the measures and steps and actions that have been taken by the administration and provided through legislation is working. The work permits, that is one area that we are, that, that we are asking them to um, facilitate. The other is to expand TPS. Um, but, of course, they are limited in terms of legislation and what is in the law. That is why we need to come together. We passed, in the past, uh, legislation, immigration le legislation, in the House and in the Senate, it failed. So let's go back and let's look at a bipartisan bill that could address those problems that we are facing here today. Uh, again, there is limitation as to money, but I'm sure that the administration is looking into ways where they could provide some federal resources, not only to New York, but other cities that are facing the same uh, crisis that we are witnessing here in New York. I know that uh, Tom Perez, who is an advisor to uh, the president, will be meeting with the mayor today, and we will see what happens there. Did, you, did he ask any questions on you, or did, what was he concerned about? No, we had meetings uh, two weeks ago with Secretary Majorca, uh, the Homeland Security um, 
secretary and Tom Ferris was there and we discussed as a delegation and the mayor was also there as to what actions the administration could take that could alleviate the crisis of New York. Well, the administration sent federal resources to New York, but not enough. It's never enough to deal with this crisis. Within next week, we're going to be opening up Creedmoor as a respite center site for single men as well as um, other areas to make sure that we're expanding placements for the shelters. We've only received $150 million from the federal government. That is simply not enough even to cover one day's worth of cost for this migrant crisis. 60 days. Can anyone here imagine 60 days as your time limit if you were homeless, you had no work authorizations, you had no family, you had no identification, yet someone is saying you have 60 days to find a job, 60 days to find a home, 60 days to get your life together. 60 days is an arbitrary number, 60 days is not a humane number, 60 days is not an acceptable number, nor a number that the Congresswoman or I stand by to say that you have 60 days to stay in the city or get out. We do not stand by that. For the migrants you spoke to, uh, did they express any gratitude for actually being in an area that's more welcoming than they had had for Florida or what? Look, um, they love this country and they see this country as our grandparents and grand grandparents saw this country as a beacon of hope. And that is part of the immigrant experience. I always say that immigrants make America, America. And on this crisis, we have to prove that true again. And we will continue to work and fight to make sure that we treat immigrants, migrants who come to this country in pursuit of the American dream with the dignity and, 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 and the respect that they, they deserve. Uh, estamos aquí bregando con este problema de la crisis de inmigrantes. Eh, obviamente estamos agradecidos por el esfuerzo que ha hecho el alcalde en ese sentido de proveer eh, vivienda, de proveer shelter, de proveer comida, de vestir a los migrantes, de ayudarlos con el proceso que les permita a ellos resolver eh, esta crisis que están enfrentando. Y por otro lado, estamos haciendo un llamado a los tres niveles de gobierno, tanto la ciudad, el gobierno estatal, como el gobierno federal. Se necesita más ayuda de parte del gobierno federal y también necesitamos la cooperación de la gobernadora Katy Jocó eh, y del presidente Joe Biden, como también eh, del alcalde Eric Adams. Esto es un problema que lo tenemos que resolver todos, tanto republicanos como demócratas. Esto, el problema de esta crisis no la creó un partido o el otro. Esto es resultado de la violencia que existe en esos países, de la mala economía que existe en esos países, de los drug lords que muchas veces han asesinado a niños o que los obligan a estar en bandas de en gangas para vender droga. So, imagínense la situación horrenda que han confrontado esta gente y nosotros estamos aquí para decir que estamos con ellos. ¿Cómo encontraron el refugio? ¿Cómo lo vio? Eh, el refugio muy muy bien ordenado, muy muy limpio, con eh, el personal brindándole asistencia médica, asistencia de, mental asistencia para las escuelas eh, y ayudándolos a llenar los formularios que le permitan a ellos establecer cuáles son las condiciones que les deberían permitir estar aquí con su familia.
Bueno, yo espero que hoy Tom Pérez está aquí, él es un uh, senior advisor del presidente y el hecho de que esté aquí entiendo yo que son buenas noticias. Esperamos que comparta eh, y que nos diga que van a asignar más fondos federales, eh, yo espero que eso sea así. Eh, y además de otras áreas donde nosotros, la delegación completa de la ciudad de Nueva York le ha pedido a la administración que considere como es eh, acelerar los procesos para que las personas... This has been breaking news.